So now my experiment is complete and I can directly compare uh, my 10 scenarios or 10 parameter configurations um, here in my experiment table so I can compare time in systems, number in systems and so on, utilizations. Uh, however, since uh, the primary uh, performance measure that we're going to use in this lab is the bulking percentage. I'm going to just move my uh, bulking percentage to the first column in my response uh, group. So now uh, we can see how uh, the bulking percentage changes as we um, allocate our additional two units of capacity to different uh, servers. So um, the other nice thing is that if we go to response results, now we see the SMORE plots for different scenarios, scenarios 1 through 10, uh, all in one place. So I can make direct comparisons of, uh, in this case, I have selected my uh, percentage of bulkers as the main response that I'm looking at here. So I can make direct comparisons of uh, the small plots uh, right here all in one place. And as you can see, it seems that my second scenario, scenario two, has the minimum uh, percentage of bulking. And so you can hover the mouse over the small plots and see different uh, values associated with uh, its different components. Let's look at scenario two. So scenario two basically is the case where we have two units of capacity at bread and two units of capacity at veggies station. And in fact, before we even did this analysis, we could uh, expect that this scenario would be um, the best possible way to allocate our uh, two additional resources to our system. Because when we look at the original model where we have one unit of capacity for uh, all servers. And as you can see, we had, um, of course, the experiment uh, controls have changed because we modified the model. So let's just ignore these. These are basically uh, one. When we ran this, these values were all one. So the bulking percentage at that time in that experiment was 9.88. But uh, when we look at the utilizations of the servers, we see that the bread station and the veggies station had the highest utilizations. Basically, these were our two uh, busiest stations uh, in the original model. So we expect that the best allocation of the two additional resources is to allocate those to these two stations that have uh, a higher utilization than the rest of the stations. And uh, that is basically why we see the most or the highest improvement in our bulking percentage when we allocate the two resources to our uh, bread and veggies stations, which also you can see in, in the side-by-side -side, uh, small plots. Now let's go back to our model and see how we can use reference properties to compare uh, the current policy, policy that maintains FIFO throughout the system um, with an alternative policy that allows cold customers to pass those customers that are waiting at the oven. So. Uh, we have done this before in a previous lab, so basically what we need is a connector that goes from the output node of the bread station to the input node of the veggie station. And we only want the cold customers to go through this, uh, through this link. So uh, what, we, what we can do is, since we are uh, distinguishing the type of uh, the model entities using the processing time um, state value that we have uh, defined for model entity. We can basically use link weights on our connectors to, uh, on these two connectors right here, to route 
the uh, right entities, entity types uh, in the right direction. So um, we know that the proc time on oven value for hot customers will be a value uh, that is non-zero, triangularly distributed with these parameters. However, the value of the same state variable for cold customers will be zero. So what I can do, I can simply uh, go back to my model and use the selection weight here to tell Simia that I only want those customers that I have a zero processing time on the oven to take this route. So what I basically need to type for my expression is model entity and then my state variable proc time on oven and if this is equal to zero I want my entities cold entities basically to skip the oven and go directly to the veggie station so that's my expression for the selection weight on my new connector and for uh, my other connector the alternative uh, condition would be model entity uh, proc time on oven not equal to zero so I have my conditions for my uh, connectors set up now I can go ahead and run my model just to make sure that I uh, that my model and logic is working correctly but note that since the processing time of the cold entities on the oven is zero we really can't uh, uh, see a cold entity if actually one of them uh, turns out to go to the oven station because everything happens in zero simulation time so what I really need to do here is to run in step mode and uh, check that all my cold entities will skip uh, the oven and only hot entities will go to the oven so I keep uh, running my model in the step mode uh, to make sure that uh, this is ex exactly what is happening in my model uh, and make sure that my uh, the logic that I just added to the model is working correctly of course now I can create a new experiment and perform the same analysis we did for the current policy for uh, for my alternative policy that I just implemented but now let's take a look at how we can set reference properties uh, for my link weights so that I can still use a single experiment to perform all my analysis so what I basically need to do here is to set reference properties for the selection weight on my two on my two connectors so I'm going to uh, select a reference proper set a reference property for my first connector and I'm going to call it uh, hot selection weight and the second one I'm going to uh, again set reference property this one cold selection weight now if I go to my uh, model definitions and properties you will see that I have the two um, expressions uh, in my reference properties that I just defined so now I can go to my same experiment that I had before and now I see the two new exp uh, expressions or reference properties that appear as controls in my experiment so now I can experiment with both policies all in one experiment in order to do that I'm going to copy uh, my controls for the set of experiments that I just performed and uh, paste them here so now I have all parameter configurations set up for the alternative policy that uh, we just implemented now in order to clarify that the first 10 scenarios uh, relate to the current policy I'm just going to 
change the selection weight for my ten scenario, uh, first 10 scenarios for the hot uh, selection weight to 1 and uh, for the cold selection weight to 0 since uh, nobody uh, skips the oven in, in the current policy. So I ran the experiment for my scenarios under the alternative policy and now if we go to our response uh, results we can see the smart plots for all of our 20 scenarios um, here and clearly we can see that the scenario where we allocate the capacities to the bread and veggie station perform best under both policies so that that will be scenario 2 which is under the current policy and scenario 12 uh, under the uh, alternative policy so now what I would like to do here uh, is to only focus on these two scenarios I'm just going to deselect all of my uh, scenarios and just uh, reselect scenarios 2 and 12 so now when I go to my smart plots, I can see uh, the two scenarios and I can uh, compare the two scenarios side by side. And as you can see, it seems that our bulking percentage is slightly uh, better in, uh, under the alternative policy when we allow passing for cold customers. And in fact, we can see a clear uh, difference between the two policies under this uh, capacity allocation if we compare uh, the timing system for cold customers so I just selected cold timing system and as you can see as we expect since our cold customers do not wait for um, the hot customers in the oven um, we expect to see a much uh, smaller timing system for cold customers under the alternative policy so far we have learned how to create reference properties by uh, making a right click on the property name and go to set the reference property and create a new reference property now suppose we would like to evaluate the performance of the system under different bulking conditions so for example in my um, add-on process uh, in my at the output node of my source um, I have set the bulking condition to, to the case where my uh, number in system is greater than 6. Now suppose we're not sure about uh, the exact value at which customers bulk or the, thresh the exact threshold value and we would like to experiment with uh, different values here. Now in this case the process to create a reference property is for this th threshold value is slightly different now in this case we need to uh, manually create a property so I'm just going to my model definitions and properties and this time I'm going to create a um, an integer property and I'm going to call it um, bulking threshold And I'm going to set the default value to 6, which was indicated in the uh, original problem statement. And I'll make sure that the visibility is set to true, which is a default. So now when I go to my experiment, again, this new property appears as a control. And this time, I would like to go back to the model and to my process. And now instead of... Uh, directly putting the value for my threshold uh, I will just use the property that I just created so I will just use a reference to that uh, reference property so here I just need to type um, bulking threshold and it appears right here so I'm going to say OK so now my customers bulk when the number in system is greater than this bulking threshold which I specify in my reference property so now what I would like to do is to create a new experiment 
And this time, I'm just going to focus on the best capacity allocation. So two units of capacity at bread and two units of capacity at veggies. And um, so let me go ahead and create the second scenario. So I'm just, I just want the first scenario to be under the current policy. So I'm going to change the selection weight, the hot selection weight to one, the cold selection weight to zero. And uh, I'm going to complete this uh, experiment table for different values of bulking threshold and um, system configurations. So here is my complete experiment table. Note that I have rearranged the uh, order of my controls. So I have bulking threshold in the first column and um, I vary my bulking threshold from four to nine and I go back and forth uh, from the current policy to the alternative policy. And then I have uh, my capacities, of course, uh, for, for my servers. Um, I have defined my response, my primary response, bulking percentage. I have also renamed my scenarios so that the first character represents the bulking threshold and the second ca character represents the, uh, the, the operating policy. So C stands for current policy, A is the alternative policy. Um, and I've run my experiment. Uh, I have run each uh, scenario for 25 replications. So I can go to my response results and side-by-side -side smart plots and uh, now see how uh, the performance of the two alternative uh, policies changes under the the selected capacity allocation as we increase uh, our bulking uh, threshold from four to nine.